Hey, how's it going? So Dustin Gitkowski here with the DG Show. You would think that because I have a tough last name, I would know how to say a last name. But we have Nick Ayala. There we go. Because yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to butcher that, and I always people butcher my last name. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, no, you're not, but it's okay. So I don't like to butcher people's last names, even though I can't say it. So what's going on, my man? Nothing, man. I'm happy to be here, bro. You're down in Fort Lauderdale, so I'm only about 25 minutes away north in Boca Raton. So oh, yeah. I figured we'd come by. That's Top a nice one. Yeah, the uh, we're supposed to. What's his name? Grant. Uh, Grant that has backyard brakes. Ever seen those guys? No, like sports cars. So. There's young cats, man. They're sports cars and they're just killing it. But he lives up there and okay. uh, Boca. We're supposed to do something with them. Yeah, it's good up there. It's a good spot. Nice. So, how long have you lived in Florida? I've been my whole life. Yeah, really? I was, bar, I was born and raised here. Born and raised. Yeah. I was not gonna think Florida. Yeah, man. Um, I love it. I've tried to move a few times and I've always come back. Where it's just it's the best. It's the best. That's, yeah. that's how it is for us at Texas. Yeah, we've let, we lived in North Carolina for a year. Well, you're in you're in a good uh, Republican state, so man, it's a little easier. <laughs> we will say we will not go anywhere <laughs> but Texas. Go there, no, no, we no, but it, <laughs> hey, man, you know what's crazy? Are, are you are you big in politics? Nah, I'm not really. I mean, just obviously with everything going on, and you you look at you look at where the states are. You know, my family's from Connecticut. Yeah, right? okay, so is my wife. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And uh, when I go back to Connecticut, especially now, you know, it's it's not what it was. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a third world country in most of the it's crazy. It's crazy. Every buildings are empty, and and you do. I was just in Jersey, same thing. I mean, it's you, you look at you look at the trend of these states, and and then you start going, well, what's the difference, you know? And um, and I'm here in Florida, obviously, is in my opinion one of the best states in the country. Yeah. Um, and you look at what's going on here, or in Texas, or in certain yeah. other states, and you, again, you just start putting two and two together and go, what's what's the difference? And it's pretty simple to see, you know. You can't think logical, man. You're thinking logical. Yeah, now. Right. Exactly. <laughs> do you do you have kids? I do. I have a uh, I have a seven year old daughter and a five and a half year old son. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. My you? let's see. I have seven boy, four boy, two daughter. So nice. yeah, close. Nice. I didn't really start caring about politics, man, until they started shoving it down my kid's throat. <laughs> yeah. With the uh, shots and stuff. Just yeah, everything, man. Like uh, I'm I'm. Listen, I don't really care what you do. I don't really care what anyone yeah, does, right? Like you you just. It's like, do you boo? Like yeah. whatever you, but when you started, like, like you said, like you started shoving stuff down my kid's throat, shots, yeah. anything, I, I'm, I drew the line and that's when I started to become more political because this is affecting your kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I read I that. Too. What was that? Uh, what was that yesterday? You're, I saw this yesterday. Maybe it was the day before. It's actually on the PBD podcast, but it said your ceiling as a father becomes your kid's floor. Mm. And dude, that like, I was like, love wow, that. man, it was love that crazy. That's good. So you're here. What do you do now? So I know you were talking about earlier. Uh, did you recently sell a company, private equity? I sold a couple companies in um, about four years ago. Uh, and I've sold one, a, a couple before that. And now I'm into, I do a lot of private equity stuff. We do okay. a lot of, a lot of money raising right now. I own, I own a bunch of um, accounting firms and, and some other stuff as well, little companies. And then um, I do a lot of, I have a big real estate portfolio. Nice. Um, so between that portfolio and then a lot of other people's, I uh, have a lot of relationships with a lot of family offices and yeah. private equity firms. So do a lot of capital raising. Okay. Yeah. Any particular companies? As far as? Like for your capital raises or like are any particular industry, sorry, not companies? Yeah. I mean, a lot. So a lot of real estate, for okay, sure. Cool. Um, a lot of alternative energy type yeah. stuff. Um, that's a big one. Infrastructure is a big one. Um, very deal agnostic. It's just, you know, most of the deals that we do or that I do, um, they're a hundred million dollars up deals. Nice. So yeah. they're, they're a little larger. Um, a lot of people come to me and, you know, trying to raise, you know, five or 6 million. It's, it's kind of harder to, for, it's actually harder to raise that really than it is the big stuff. Why is that? Uh, because when you're going to high net worth individuals at that point, right? Yeah. You're not really going to these, these funds that have, you know, so-called unlimited cash yeah. in, in a way. Um, and when you, when you get to that, those bigger levels, it's, it's the deals, the deals are more structured. They're easier to put together. Um, they have to put the money. They got to put the money somewhere. Somewhere to go. So, um, you know, we deal with with we deal with funds that their their LPs that they're getting money from are you know the big guys like BlackRock. Yeah. And, you know, they just they got to park money because they have so much. So, and it, isn't it crazy how it's it is that I mean I hate to be that guy but it's like the five hundred dollar client wants everything. Same thing. It is, isn't it? It's so weird. We just acquired a company, so we're going through both ends. Right. So we're going through. You probably appreciate this, but so we're our our private equity deal is a hundred million north right now right. to acquire the company, and you know we're going to roll back, so not the whole thing, but 
but we just acquired a company that does five million. Yep. So we're rolling them up because they fit our market strategy. Kind of came through the same mm -hmm. industries we did, and it was such a pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. has to get it done. Yeah. And it was like, well, what about this? And I'm like, are you kidding me yeah. right now? It, it was crazy because these other guys are just like, Easy. who are you? What are you about? Yeah. What is it? And it's it's the same amount of work goes into it. Actually, a lot of times it's more just more, headache. Yeah. Yeah. But the same uh, underlying work goes into the small deals versus the huge deals. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, it's it's wild. It's wild because you start thinking about that and it's like, does, it almost doesn't make sense, yeah. but, it's, but, it but, but it does when sense. you break it down. It yeah. does. It, yeah. it's, it's, it, we deal with it in roofing and not all the time, right? It's always the people that tell you they have, or it's always the people that say money's not an issue. It's always money's an right. issue, right? And I feel like that's the same kind of client. It's the you know, I, I and it, it, I'm not hating on them because they might only have, let's say, fifty thousand dollars to invest. So right. this could be all of your family's yeah. worth. So I, I get that, yeah. and I was that way as well. Yeah. But now I'm almost like, once I stopped chasing money, money became the easiest thing to get. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. Um, so for you, you had an insurance company, right? Is that I did. what I did? Is that like the first business you owned, or what was the first? No, business no, I've had a bunch of them. I had a. Um, a big lead generation company in the solar space. Oh, back nice. In oh, yeah. Like solar Bros. Yeah. Back when it was like the wild, wild west, though. Not now. Yeah. Uh, it's different now. I'm talking early, um, like mid 2000s. Okay. Up, no, up, way up, back. Yeah. Up until, you know, like 2018 ish. Um, it was literally the wild, wild west at that point. So, you know, my clients were, you know, Solar City, which is, you know, Elon Musk's company, and yeah. Sunrun, Huge. and NRG, the big guys. Yeah. Um, we were doing a lot of lead gen and selling for them, which was good. Yeah. Um, I unloaded that company got into in insurance which was nice oh nice um and then as, coupled that with another marketing company as well got, uh, unloaded those two um so it's it's been good dude i've had a, i've had a really cool um path you know i don't come from anything yeah you know my family is 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 middle class as middle class gets um i'm lucky i grew up where i grew up because i got to see a lot Boca's a really uh you know pretty cool place to be is that inspiring to you it was. I mean, it yeah. still is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No doubt. Um, I didn't realize it when I was young, but like, you know, I saw the best of the best. I yeah. saw, I, I, I slept in a one bedroom apartment with my dad on the floor. Like, so I didn't have it, yeah. but I was there. But you saw, I saw it. it. And a lot of my friends growing up, their families were those people. So I, I got to see yeah. who was in charge and who, who got the respect and, um, you know, what lifestyle they were living so yeah f fuck yeah very inspiring why is that so yesterday we were uh we were on the boat it's cool the the owner of the house was just airbnb this but the, they were like you could take we got a captain if you want to hire him take nice. out the boat love it so we did and of course you know you get the deeper you get out you're like oh shit you know and but i was standing up and i texted like because you know we have six seven companies were invested in like several other and I texted one of my business partners and um, one of our companies. And I was like, hey, bro, we haven't done shit yet. He's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. I was like, I was like standing up on the boat. I was like, it was burning my soul seeing these homes. I was like, yeah. man, I haven't done anything yet. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like you, man. Uh, rough, not, not, rough upbringing, but we didn't have it. We lived right. in a trailer park, didn't know my dad. My mom's still a crackhead, right. like we were dirt poor, bounced around, homeless at 14, like didn't have it. And seeing that yesterday, I was like, you know, and I'm it's inspiring. blessed. It's it is. Inspiring. But why is why do you think some people go the opposite way? Because then there's other people, man, that guy's just lucky. And I'm like, dude, that guy well, worked his lucky. ass off yeah, at all. Yeah, there's no luck there. And so why do you think, like, okay, for instance, you, you didn't have it, but you grew up around it, right. right? A lot of my friends, same way. A lot of my friends had money. I saw it. So I didn't have it, obviously. But why is it some people are motivated by that and some people are like it's lucky yeah. i think it's two things i think uh, um it's one it, there's levels to everything yep. right so not only is there levels to your mind like you, you, we all have limited beliefs and, and i think a lot of those people their limited beliefs are much higher right they, they think much bigger yeah and they keep going um and they also they're not victims right there's so many people yeah. that have that victim that those guys that say oh victim that guy's so lucky yeah no he's fucking not or he or she's not no they 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 got there because they they put in the work they did things that you weren't willing to do uh, they made sacrifices that most people aren't willing to sacrifice. And so because of that, they, they're they seeing levels of success. I was just in New Jersey yesterday, and I was at a, um, a very, very elite private uh, uh, golf course. Um, and the owner of that course um, is the guy who started and sold, and sold Arizona Ice Tea. Wow. And um, the, the people I was around, a lot of Wall Street guys and a lot of um, 
uh, just just ridiculously successful when it comes to business yeah. success people and and it, you know there's so many levels of things right like wherever you are i am or anyone here is watching there's always more whether you want always, that or not yeah. that's that's up to you right um so it's all relative and and you know, I'm, I'm at a place yesterday and luckily i get to go to those places a lot where it's just it opens your mind it's like god like there's so <laughs> there's this whole world out there where you know um that you, you just you just want to find a way to to, to to get yourself into and to unlock it yeah to it was, unlock it yeah i was really having that and it, it look it, you know i'm i'm blessed so someone recently on one of course you know it's trolls but it was like you sound angry and you should be blah blah, blah. i was like i'm not angry i'm just there's more that i could do right. right as good as you think you are there's somebody out there that's out working right it's it's like that old i can't remember if it was a duke commercial or nike commercial but tim tebow recently uh like reposted and said somewhere out there while i'm resting he's working no doubt. when we meet because of that he's gonna win yeah and i'm like that's a 20 million dollar home on the water that's probably your vacation home yeah. and you're 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 beating me like that's just call it what it is you're beating me and my wife was like what is wrong with you yesterday and i was like nothing i go but it just shows that you can come so far but there's still so much more you could yeah. go do man and it's like i see people like that and it's super inspiring it is like it's, it's inspiring no to see that so you got insurance sold your company got several ones how did was how did what was the first company you got in and like what before you became an entrepreneur what were you doing so um because it was the legion right the yeah first one? so out of college I, yeah. I actually i actually played professional golf really uh, yeah yeah so um i turned pro after college that's awesome where'd you go to college world, florida state florida state yeah seminoles um, all right yeah man and uh it, it was great uh, i got to travel a lot that's awesome. Traveled the world. It was really cool. I was I was as good as I was. Yeah. I wasn't good enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? These humbling. guys. Are, like I could easily, you know, we can compete on a on a in, day in and day out basis, yeah. but I couldn't compete with them on a everyday basis. Yeah. Like they're just they're that much better. Like you go to any course, you hustle everybody there, but then you get out right. there, you're like, wow. Yeah. The, it's just you know, I was competing. I I did a, I did I did pretty well, and um, I just I was tired of being broke because it's yeah. it's one of those things where. You're not making money unless you're the top 20, 30 guys in the world, yeah. especially back then. This is, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever. And um, and I was traveling 32, 33 weeks a year, man. It was, oh, wow. it was a lot. Yeah. You're traveling by yourself. I mean, it's 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 a lot. It's It looks beautiful on TV, but it, it ain't like that. It's a that, grind, right? yeah. It's a grind. And so I came to the, I had a, I had an injury on my shoulder, and I came to a realization. I had to take off like like three months, and I had just like, I didn't want to go I didn't want to go back. I was done. And uh, that was a hard, hard hit for me. I didn't know what the frig I was going to do in my life. Yeah. I was fucked up, man. I had no idea. And uh, I, through that, I was always doing little businesses here and there, like entrepreneur stuff yeah. here and there, just trying to make money. Um, and and I, after I finally figured out and started started a marketing company, and I, that one got pretty big. We were we were operating on like four different continents at yeah, one point. That's awesome. It was it got pretty big pretty quick. Uh, it was fun. Um, and and just from there. You know, it's funny. I'm always open opportunity, right? Yeah. And it's like I think when you have that mindset, when you just keep your mindset open to mm -hmm. it, it continues to come, and then you can figure out what to take and what not to. But when you're always open to it, more shit's just gonna keep yeah. popping your way. And so I, I do. You know, now I, I get the opportunity to do a lot of stuff. Like I, I don't fun, just have yeah. to focus on one thing. I do a lot of things. I'm doing roll ups in certain space. I I have accounting firms, but I don't I don't know anything about accounting. I'm yeah, not an accountant. Not an accountant. Yeah, I can't. Um, but yeah, you know, I own accounting firms. I'm doing roll ups in the accounting space, um, and and a bunch of other businesses too. And it's it's fun, man. It's it's a lot of fun. I was actually thinking about doing something. I was calling the backyard roll up. You would like this is is you know like a fencing, hardscaping, um, um, turf company yeah. rolling those up yeah. and selling it to PE in in, in a couple of years. You yeah. know, just getting into a certain multiple um but it's fun dude business yeah. is fun if you do it with yeah, the right it's, people it becomes you know? a game yeah i think it's so i you know i didn't get to that level in, in a sport but i always i loved sports yeah and i feel like business it's business and or sales like sales business is the it's the closest thing you'll get to sports right it's the closest thing oh you're yeah competing. it's competitive yeah shit. it's so much fun yeah. too it's it's great that, that's like we're in you know obviously we started in roofing but we got painless didn't repair for your car right because the theory was your your home gets hit your car gets hit right so we do both uh we we have a marketing company but we serve as ourselves because i got right. i got so tired awesome. of paying these other yep. people because you know how it is dime it's dime dude, if it you doesn't control your marketing you win you win 
And then obviously the production guys, right? Like I got, there was a videographer and it was trying to find someone on the weekend or this or that. And I was like, man, I just need to hire full-time guys. Right. So we started our own production company. Um, we have an insurance supplement business, a uh, few other things, but I invested in like, I've, I've been, I've been blessed. I invested in liquid death, uh, free rank coffee, nice. goat fuel, uh, tips, like a couple of other different businesses, but it's fun. And we're looking at getting into other spaces. And one of the things we want to do next is as going through this private equity deal, I'm like, man, we should do private equity right. next or raise capital because right. I think you realize it's not really business, it's the people. It's not what you do. No doubt. It's the people you do yeah. it with. And that's what makes it so, so that, great. that's that was that was literally my uh very much of my transformation too is exactly what you're going through right now is when you start selling companies or seeing what PE does, you you figure out the formula. Yeah. And it's just a formula. All of it is family yeah. offices, PE, it's all a formula. When you figure out the formula, like I can do that. You do like anything. as smart as these people are, they're not that much smarter than I am. Yeah. I can do that, you know? And so that's exactly what happened to me. My mind started opening to bigger things. And, you know, now I'm doing PE stuff and, and I have yeah. a, a boatload of a different um, avenues between of real estate. You know, I'm, I'm, I, we have about 1.2 to $1.4 billion in assets under management up in Jersey, um, uh, just in one portfolio alone. So there, there's, that's it's, amazing. it's so cool how, when you start to open your, your brain to this stuff. Yeah. It's wild, dude. Yeah. It's and, and it's funny because like I I joke and I'm like, I'm not supposed to be in it, dude. I, yeah. I went to Florida State. I didn't go to Harvard. No. You know what I mean? But no. it, it, guys like you, um, guys like me and, and others out there, you start pushing, you just keep going and, and it happens. You know, it's cool. You, you, it was uh I have that feeling all the time because the other day, I don't remember who I was with, it was one of our sales guys and uh one of our leaders. And it was basically my, I mean, I, I'm just, I see people as people, right? I don't get like starstruck or I don't think, I just if you're a good person, I want to do business with you. It, for, like I have two, like, especially for, for, you know, people and I say men or women is if you're a guy and you're not a good father, you're yeah. out, right? That's number yeah. one. And then just a good person. Yeah. But he was, he was sitting there looking at me. I was like, hey, what's, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking at me like that? And he's like, dude, I was just listening to your phone calls. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, your last three phone calls were Kevin Holland. He's like, Derek Fay and Roger Seeley. And I was like, so? And he was just like, man, I remember you, like, back in the day. I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, like, you know, just, I was like, hey, did I, did I, I thought I was, I thought he was meant like I was being arrogant or something. I was like, hey, man, like, what did I do? He was like, no, man, it's just, it, it's, it's crazy because you always said one day you'd be in that room and right. you are, but I was like, Hey, here's the crazy thing. I feel like I don't belong in that room. Right. And I think that's what maybe keeps me in the room or right. it's easier to get in the room is because humble. Exactly. Humble. I'm like, I didn't go to like, dude, it took me five years to graduate high school. Right. Uh, and it's because most of the time I just didn't attend, but I didn't, you know, there was college wasn't even, <laughs> Hey bro, that was out. <laughs> and I started hustling. But for you, so you didn't actually have a job outside of really being an entrepreneur. So I never, I never really been like an employee. Yeah. Which, which sometimes is hard for me too because I have a lot of employees in my businesses yeah. and, and I try my best to always see things from their point of view because I, I believe in business. You know, people talk about customers coming first. Well, I, I believe personally that employees come first because if you that. keep your employees happy, yes. uh, generally you're, they're going to make your customers happy. Yep. They're, the, they're the face of the company. So um, yeah, so that, that was a challenge for me for a little while was, was understanding their mindset versus mine. Yeah. And, and putting myself in their shoes when, when something arises, right? Which is what I try to do now. And I, I think I do a good job at it. You know, I, I could always be better, but we, uh, we're always doing things for the employees. We're trying to incentivize and make money. We're trying to do stuff with them, trying to, um, but yeah, I never was an employee. So I've, I've been an entrepreneur or, or trying to make money, figuring out how to make money my whole life. That's crazy. Like you don't meet very many people like that, um, that haven't been an employee at some point. I think it comes from my parents, right? Um, Again, I'm super middle class. Yeah. But you know, my mom was an aerobic instructor her whole life. So really she's a contractor. Yeah. My dad owned a couple of businesses. He owned a patio furniture business at one point, which did pretty, which did decent at one point, and a couple of little things. So I kind of saw that, right? I saw like they weren't ever clocking in, clocking out. Yeah. It was more of like they had time to do stuff where I would go to work with them. So I think that kind of helped me or, or trained me in a way where I didn't under, I didn't even understand the employee job. Yeah. Like I didn't get it. See, I was a, I was a complete opposite. I, I think because um, coming from nothing, I wanted something safe, right? Right. In, in a way. Yeah. But I got into sales, so it was a little, a little bit. But uh, it's I didn't I didn't become an entre entrepreneur until I was thirty six. Yeah. Thirty five, thirty six. So I took the complete opposite approach. Um, but 
but that just but I think that's what's great because when how old were you when you started? Started Entre- entrepreneur. You're like really your first kind of you say we started well, really making money. When I stopped playing golf, I was like 26, 26 yeah, so, so around that time. Yeah. But I was always doing stuff prior, but that was like when it started. The main 26, is, 27, yeah. So 26, you talk about 36. It's like well, it doesn't matter when you start. Yeah. Just fucking start. Yeah, just start. And I love that because I think social media people are seeing that more, right? And entrepreneurship is what drives America. Yes. A hundred percent. Small business drives America. It's driven America forever. Yep. Socialist shit don't work. Like s- small business drives America. Yep. And you start seeing these younger, younger, this younger generation. I'm 40, just turned 40. Um, you start seeing these younger generations, guys that are and girls that are in their twenties, and they have the mindset of like, I don't want to fucking be bossed around. I don't want to ha- I don't want to be an employee. I want to be an entrepreneur. It's fucking awesome. And I love watching it. Yeah. It's also concerning too because you need employees. Yeah. Right. So there's there's two yeah. sides to it. And I think that's why a lot of the government is trying to like stop it because we're like, whoa, whoa, hold up. We need we so need employees. Yeah. We need that separation because you do in any economy. Um, but but again, in capitalistic societies like what we're in, um, it works. It fucking works. It's worked forever. Yeah. It's what made America great. Yeah. It's, it's what made us who we are. And I see these young young people coming out. And wanting to be entrepreneurs, and it's fucking awesome. I yeah, love it. Dude. It's great. Some of them shouldn't be. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's true. Yes, that's some true. of them shouldn't be. That's but true. it's but you know, but you should, look if you think <laughs> you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Look, here's a first. So we're roofing. We have a hundred and call it twenty five people, hundred and thirty, and we just acquired a company through we're one fifty plus. But I would say seventy five percent of our team is independent contractors, mm-hmm. right? Even the sales mm-hmm. reps. Uh, we have W-2 and a lot of it, but go, look, man, if you're not, if you think you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur, get into a sales game. Yeah. Because it, Absolutely. It, that's it, because the no deals doubt. pays the bills. Yeah. And people think the systems and processes and this and that and everything else, if you ain't got any revenue, it doesn't matter. But if, if you are not the top sales guy in your organization or the hardest worker, you're fucking done. You will never be an entrepreneur because, no if, or if you want to be an entrepreneur to work your own schedule, it, you'll never, never make happen. it. Yeah, and it's it's. I laugh at the so many kids nowadays. I say kids, I'm getting old. They they uh, want to put you know the CEO hashtag yeah, boss yeah, yeah, in their yeah, bio. Yeah, That's all yeah. what it's all about. But I'm like, you're not really a boss. Yeah. Uh, I, I I was talking to some kids the other day, and I want to ask you this question because it sounds like obviously you had some failures early on. Oh, uh, tons. A ton. How much? But it also sounds like you've had a lot of success in the business. Have you had any of your business go out of business or fail? Um, I've had little ones go out yeah. that like, I just didn't pay enough attention to for yeah. sure. Um, but failure is part of it. You have to, you have to fall. Mm-hmm. And, and the biggest thing with like being an entrepreneur, I think, and, and these younger folks is what you don't realize you're going to go to a job and clock in and clock out and then pretend to work eight hours. You're not going to work eight hours. You're probably going to work four hours and oh, it's four yeah, hours. Aren't that, even hard work. Yeah. As an entrepreneur, you're going to work a hundred times harder. It's 24 seven. There's no, there's no shut off. There's no turn off switch zero. And that's the beauty of it. But the biggest thing is discipline. You know this. You've, you've been on both sides. It, this is what I see people fail all the time. I had a, I had a, sales, a, a sales team in my insurance company of over 7,000 people, all independent That's contractors. That's awesome. So like, I understand how to train people to, to do yeah. that, right? Um, and the one biggest thing I've ever, I always see is discipline. Like, uh, if you yes. don't have the discipline, when, when I, was, I used to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. I don't do any more because I enjoy my kids now. So, but it was 4.30. Yeah. I don't care if it was Saturday, if it was Sunday. I don't care if my wife rolled over and wanted me to stay in bed, which I wanted to stay in bed too. Yeah. I was up because I had to get shit done. And so I was super disciplined for so long with, with just blinders on. That's what led to any level of success. And you see people, that's what they do, right? Where a lot of people aren't willing to make that sacrifice or they don't see that sacrifice. Failure is part of it. I have failed every day in my life, but also in business as well. Yeah. I've made so many mistakes. You try something, it doesn't work. That happens every day, right? You see yeah. that. So, but failure is what teaches you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you learn more from the failure, failure than you do from the success. There's no All fucking day. doubt about it, it. It's like the wins are, uh, I expect to win, yeah. right? And it's just a standard I hold no to myself. I expect to win. So when I win, it's not a big deal for me. Like when people see, like I, I actually do not think I'm successful at all. Like I really like, humbly these guys will laugh at me because we'll get done with the podcast i'm like how was it it's fucking terrible and they're like dude that was really good i'm like oh you know wow and i don't think it was successful business and i mean uh 100 plus million dollar company is no joke right but i just think there's so much more i just think there's a lot of potential for me i think there's a lot of potential for our organization the people i'm surrounded by i think i'm i think i'm surrounded by the best team that's what makes it even better but i really don't feel like that you know i'm successful at all uh, but also, I've had a ton of failure in my life, right? Just all, all that. 
And I think you really you fail your way to success. Yeah. You know, that's that's the the goal. But I think there's also this misconception of I think it, you, like you said, you said it perfect. And I was I'm so glad you said that because my point was I think there's a misconception that you're going to start a business and you have to fail before you're going to win. Yes, you're going to fail in the day to day. Yes, right. you're going to fail in the decision making. Right. I've made some terrible decisions in our organization, and I I look back and I always try to analyze the losses and go. What I do is I don't dwell on them. I look at them. Let's let's say like I guess the 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 common was we had a situation in our Houston market, and mm -hmm. we had a a guy running the market. And we were, pro were promoting him to run the market. And we had a guy down there that was one of our top sales reps in the organization, you know, million pl dollars plus a year rider, good dude, just, you know, a little immature, but probably wasn't ready for a leadership role right. yet. But it was a new market, so you could take a risk. Well, I took a risk on the guy that had the better resume, that kind of, you know, corporate America, thought be a better leader, and ended up losing the other guy, right? Mm. And when I analyzed it, and then I realized that I made a bad decision, and then we, the second guy, we actually, the, the guy we promoted, we had ended up getting rid of, and so lost both of them. The one should have lost, but the other one. And I look back, and they're like, "Do you regret the decision?" I go, "I don't regret it because I learned so much right, from it. Right. Um, I went against my gut because right. my gut always tells me to promote the talent, right? Because right. at the end of the day, hard work, like what we talked about, will win. And I thought about there's three or four different things I could have done to have been better. And the reason I don't regret it and the reason I don't dwell is I know for a fact that there's been three or four people in our organization that had I not gone through that, I probably would end up losing them because yeah. I would have made yeah. different decisions. And so I really do feel you learn more from your losses um, that you go through if you study them, right? You watch the game film and go, what could I have did here? Okay, great. Move on and take ego away. And then, but I think for me, it's just, it's just almost this thing out there where it's like, oh, you haven't, you haven't been a business owner unless you've you know, lost all your money. And, and I'm like, that's nah, not that's true bullshit. though. That's not true that's because if you work hard and you don't quit, you will not lose in your business. Now, comma, during COVID, yes, there were businesses that unfortunately got shut down with no, they, they didn't have a choice. Outside of that, you said it perfectly. You go, I had a couple small ones go out because I didn't pay attention right. to them. That's what it happens. Right, if you open a business for the nine to five, you're probably going to go out of business. Right. If you open it to take vacations, you're probably going to go out of business. If you open it to go remote, you're probably <laughs> going to go out of business, right? Like you can't, I do that too. I'm probably a little different in the game. Uh, you, how old are you now? Just turned 40. Just turned 40. Yeah. You started at 26, right? You know, the journey, I started my journey 10 years later and we're the same age. Right. And so I'm in that still sacrifice stage where I wake up at 5 a.m. Yeah. There's non-negotiations, yeah. right? But you can get to a level once you set it up, you can go to that. I'm not there yet, which I love about this entrepreneur game yeah. is you're like, I get to sleep in with my kids yeah. and whatever. I'm up, you know, 5 a.m. So I think for anybody out there, it's like, don't listen to all this internet crap. Find out where you're at in the game. Yeah. And then there's, 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 there's different levels and different opportunities for everyone out there. But I think people get so caught up in the social media game. They're like, nope, I've got to wake up at 6 a.m. You know, yeah, and do this. I mean, look, I, you gotta, if you got to do what's right for you. 100%. Right? For me, I, I had a wife and kids, and um, they need my attention, but I had to get to work. So if I can wake up at 4.30 in the morning and knock out a bunch of work from 4.30 to 6.30 yes. when no one's up, I'm gonna do it. Or if I'm gonna go to the gym at four, five o'clock to get that knocked out, Absolutely. I'm gonna do that. So um, you gotta do what's right for you. The whole like, oh, you better have a six pack or you this is that. I mean, come yeah. on, I mean, this is what it is. People are making, doing their thing on social, yeah. it's great. But you start looking at people that have real success. Like I'm, I'm blessed to be around individuals at like clubs that I'm, I'm, I'm members of or places I go that have, when you talk about financial success, it's, it's not social media financial success. It's, yeah, it's real. That's shit. the best it's, way to put it. It's real social shit. media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real shit. And I start looking at them and the conversations they have and how they talk and how they handle themselves and what they're doing. It's different, right? It's what do different. you think the difference maker is there? Like between what do you what do you think it is? Those conversations that they're having. The main difference, two or three. I know there's a lot, but uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, well, this is going to come off a little odd, but ego is a big one. Mm -hmm. We all have it, right? Yep. And yes. the guys that have hundreds and millions and billions, they have it too. But when you're sitting down at a table with them or you're sitting down actually talking business, it's not there. Yeah. They're, they're, they're figuring out how to make the money. They're figuring out what to do to make the money. Absolutely. It's, it's not this, I'm better than you. It's actually like, how can you help me? How can you help me 
make more money where I can help you too. Absolutely. Where a lot of times in this day and age are people, um, especially in, in new money, I guess you could say, um, it, um, it, it's just a lot more ego and it's like, I'm better than you. And it's like, dude, that's, we're all human beings. Like, yeah. we, don't have to, we don't have to act that way, you know? Uh, I don't know if that makes sense or not. No, it does. I, 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 I struggle with the, it probably sound odd, I have a God complex where I do think I'm better than everyone from a competitive standpoint. I think there's nobody I can't compete with. Well, that's but, a good thing, though. Yeah, but then that's on, a good thing. I, but I have, like, I think what you're saying is I'm also on the flip side, if you use the word humble, whatever it is, where I think everybody is better than me and is outworking me, and I'm just, like, thankful to be around them. I have that yin-yang that pulls me yeah. every direction, and you notice, I, I, I feel like, one, most successful people I I'm around don't really talk about their problems. No, uh, and I never. I, I've, I've, ever. I've I always hear, well, you got to strategize about what's going wrong. I'm, I just haven't been in that room where it's happened. I've, I've paid attention that I feel like you have to be aware and you have to, but I haven't seen them talk about problems. It's like, they just move on from move them. on. It's like focus on the, the good. Right. Yeah. And positivity. No, always. Yeah. And I'll, the, the thing that I've noticed recently that I've had with my successful friends is there's the difference between the winners and losers is losers call you to vent about a problem that mm -hmm. comes up. Right. And they're like, Oh man, this is hard. That's hard. This, winners that. find solutions quick. Winners will call you and say, Hey, I was faced with this challenge. Here's what I'm thinking. What do you think about that? Or what would yeah. you do? Yeah. And I've not, and I don't know when it clicked for me the other day. And I was like, wow, man, like it is different when you get into those circles. It is mm -hmm. different when you talk to people. I feel like the winners that I'm around, they call you. And even though it's the same problem, they don't bitch. They don't complain. They're asking you for a solution right. or kind of bounce it off right. of you. And the other people are just complaining. And I've, I've also noticed that successful people just don't buy your bullshit. Like they don't want to be around you. If you're going to complain negative, they're not going to bring you down, but they're just going to. It, it, you're, yeah, you're just out. You're out. You're, yeah. It's not that you, if you don't bring any positivity, you're out. And that's how yeah. you're hundred percent right. It's also like with money too, right? Where the successful, unsuccessful people or people, you know, that unsuccessfully in, in finances, I should say, um, they focus most of the time on what's going out, how much yeah. money they're spending, not what's coming in. Where people that are making money, dude, you're focusing 98% of your time on what's coming in and 2% on what's going out. You just need to make more money. Right. Yeah. It's the same uh -huh. thing. It's the positivity versus yeah. the negativity. Um, and yes, you're right, dude. You get around successful people. They're so positive all yeah. the time. Nonstop, always positive, always thinking the right same positive way. Bad shit happens, but it's just not on to the next. Keep keep moving. Yeah. Keep moving. Keep moving. What has been the for life business? I think it all runs together. I'm a big integrator. Um, I think it's it's work life integration. But what's been for you dealing with so many businesses, so many people? How do you stay grounded, right? Because here's the, the flip side of entrepreneur people don't see. Everybody that works for you or is associated with you typically sends you the bad shit. Yeah. Like nobody just calls you. Hey, Nick, being an owner. I came. <laughs> hey, I was driving down the street. It right. was great weather. No right. traffic. No. I made it to the office on time. <laughs> I got paid. Dude, it's great. It's this happened. That happened. Right. Flat tire. You're late. Whatever it is, man. It's like it's like social media. Nobody goes on there and just goes, man. Today's a wonderful day. It's always like, uh, er, wreck on this road or flat tire this. Bad service here. What is the thing that keeps you grounded? How do you do that? Because you get so much bad shit all the time. For me, it's simple. I mean, I don't know for everyone else. Again, I grew up with nothing, right? Yep. So my family is same way. So I remember the days, bro, when you know you go to the gas station. And I'll never forget my days. Like you go to the gas station, your your car's on empty. Yeah. I used to fill my car up, and then when it got to half a tank, I would go back to the gas station and fill it back up because that first half of the tank goes slower than the second half. Yeah. Once it gets to half on the last half, it goes faster. Yeah, like it's like done. It's done, yeah. right? Yeah. So I would literally go back to the gas station and fill back up to the to the top, so that went slower. Yeah. I never forget those days, right? And mm -hmm. and and again, I see people in my life, family, and things like that that they're still in those positions, so. I mean, I'm, I'm a very faith-based individual. That's awesome. Um, very faith-based. Um, being humble, staying humble, staying grounded is very easy for me because I understand what struggle is, um, what what it what it is in my what it has been in my life, and what it is in others. I still see it with friends and family in my life. So I always I'm I'm I always put myself in other people's position when I'm talking to them, um, when I'm thinking about them. Um, I'm always 
putting myself in their position. And all I'm trying to do is figure out how to make myself better every day so that I, I can that. set a good example for my children so they can make themselves better every day. Because, you know, my children are gonna be blessed, which is wonderful, but they're gonna have to learn how to work because they're not gonna be spoiled little brats. So. It's just a struggle, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's you don't struggle, know how good but... you have it. How do you keep getting better every day? I got actually got asked this question the other day. The reason I asked you, I thought it was actually a really good question is someone asked me, hey, when you're doing what you do, how do you get better every single day? Self-analyzing, you have to analyze yourself every day. Every it's second of every exactly day, especially before you go, to, you go to sleep. What did I do good today? What did I do bad today? What can I do better and improve on? Um, I read a lot of books. Uh, that's a big deal. You have to read, listening to these podcasts, yeah, doing, doing yeah. stuff to make yourself, if you can pick up one piece of information every day that you didn't know, you're going to gradually get better. And then honestly, networking and being around the right people. If, if you learn to be around the right people, the right circle, you, it's going to force you to be better. It's going to yes. force you to get in every aspect, right? If you want to get closer to God, you're going to go to people that that's what they do. If you want to get in better shape, you're going to get around people that are in physically good shape. Yep. Uh, if you want to get better business, get around people that are more successful than you and listen and learn and talk and ask questions. Don't be egotistical. Just ask questions to learn. Yeah. Because most people will give you answers, bro. That's the one thing. Is it's all out there. They'll give you the answers. Yes. People want to tell you their story. Yeah. They all have a story and they want to hear it. Or they want to tell it. And if you listen, you're gonna pick stuff up and you're gonna get so much better, so much faster. It's amazing that so many people will ask you for favors, but they won't take your advice, right? It is the, like, that was one of the most eye-opening things for me as a business owner was people would ask to borrow money, right? Like, right. They, like you get that, like that's all the time. Ask to borrow money, can you give me this? You have it, so you should give it to me. And I'm like, the same people that I give advice to on how I got here, don't do the things that help me get there, but then turn around, but, oh, I, I want what you have and I'll do anything yeah. to do it. But the things that you tell them to do, they don't do. Yeah. But then they'll, they have the audacity to have like, so my money is good enough for you, but the things that I tell you on how I made it aren't, right? right? It is, it's it, not that it's hard. They just don't want, they don't want to have to put that work in. They don't want to have to put it in. They don't want to have to put the sacrifice in. Yeah. Because whenever you sacrifice, you got to give something up. Mm -hmm. So most people don't want to give it up. And if for everyone, it's different. It might be giving up football on Sundays. It might be giving up drugs and alcohol. Like whatever yes. it is for each person, they just don't want to make that sacrifice. It, it's not what you want. It's what you're willing to do to get it. 100%. And I've, I've felt that a lot just recently in this journey because I feel like I'm trying to make up for lost time. Part yeah. of it is. Um, well, you're doing a good job. I appreciate that, man. And it's it's... You have to. I, it's funny you said that because that's the exact answer I gave. They're like, how do you stay better? I go, I analyze myself every day. I said, typically, it's every day. Then typically, it's on a weekly basis, a monthly, a quarter, half a year, a year. And I said, if you'll, if you'll even notice my post, um, because they asked me a two-part question. They're like, why so heavy on social media? And I said, uh, man, this might shock you because, one, the easy answer is you build a brand, right? Like, personal brand, brand. I said, but... Uh, I, I don't I don't have a lot of memories from my childhood family. I don't know my real dad, so that's different. You know, I kind of I was kind of gone at fourteen, so there was an on and off relationship. So whether good memories or bad memories, I don't have them. I said so. I post every day and document over post because I'm share. I want one day my kids to look back right. and go, that was my dad. Yeah, that's cool. And, and with these podcasts, it's like man, you can see where dad was at in his life. Like man, dad was out in Florida. Like was he just filming a podcast? No, dad was. You know, meeting people, right. uh, real estate agents were going to, we just, uh, we invested in bare knuckle. So there was a fight tonight. Yep. Um, dinner with Patrick Bed David. Like, I'm trying to be around better people. And so it's like you said, sacrifice. And it's. So Patrick Bed David sold his insurance company to the same private equity firm I sold my. Really? So yeah, he, he's yeah. a good dude. We all in the same insurance, the uh, same like space like yeah, that? Yeah, very similar space. Yeah. 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 So that's crazy. That's a, you yeah, also he sold time? his, I think a year and a half after I, I had sold mine, a year and a half before. He oh, sold. really? Both in, oh, he was in Dallas at the time, though. That's yeah. actually funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was in yeah. Dallas. His was, he had a large, large, mine yeah. was big, but his, his was a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God damn it, Patrick. <laughs> you one upper. Like, only, he's a good dude, man. He, he really is he a is, good dude. And his content lately has just been fire. I mean, he's just killing it. Yeah. yeah. He, you And that's, that's what we talked about. It's like, you got to push it out. And that's why I do. I want my kids to see it one day and just go, that was dad, man. That was, because you would. It's like, you think about, man. Here's here's probably something else too. I don't know if you felt this, but I felt this a lot lately. So, I always of 
we talk about not caring what people think, right? I spent my whole life caring what everyone thought mm -hmm. because I was the white trash kid, mm -hmm. you know, like people judge me. Who's your dad? You don't care anymore. I don't know, you know? Yeah. I don't care anymore. Right. And it's, it's a whole new world when that happens. It's a whole different world yeah. because, and then I'm like, then I started, goes back to what you said. You start analyzing, right? Every day. When did it start? When did it stop? Well, I feel like when you're a little kid, when you're a baby, up to, I don't know when it is, five, six, seven, ten years old, uh, you don't care what anyone thinks. Right. You'll do whatever. Yeah, there's no judgment yet. When you hit, I don't know, the age 60, 65, 70, you, I always like the old <laughs> dudes. They don't care. They'll shoot their shot. They don't What's care. up, beautiful? Uh, like, they, don't, they don't care, uh, right? Uh, so where does it stop when you're a kid that you start caring what everyone thinks, and then when is it an adult that you stop caring? And it's crazy to me is if you go ask elderly people, right, on their deathbed, they always talk about, or they always ask, well, when you, now that you have this, what would you do differently that you know now that you would do then? Dude, all the answers are the same. I'd spend more time with my family. Right. I'd spend more time with my kids. Right. I would have stopped caring what people think. I would have took the risk. I would have worked hard. I would have eliminated the bullshit. They, they, it's all a form of the same kind of answers, right? So if you know what the answer is going to be, just start living it now. Mm -hmm. And I just started doing that. I was like, I already know what the answers to the test are then. Just start doing it now. Right. And I don't know, man, but I think it came from what you talked about was the self-analyzing. Right. I was like, why do I care what freaking Joe says? Like, dude, fucking who, Joe who went cares? to, like, you know, yeah. who cares? And right. I was like, I don't want any regrets, man. When I'm 70, when I'm 80, I don't want to be there and have regrets, man. And I don't want any of that stuff. And so I think it really helped me with the self-audit was you find out who you really are, man. And once you find out who you really are, then you can find out what you really want. And then it gets super scary. Yeah. So, I love that, bro. Yeah, I, I love that. that. I have the same, 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 you know, mental aspect of that. People always ask me, like, they have always asked me, like, what keeps you going? You know, what, what, what really fuels you? And I'm like, you know, the easy answer is, you know, my kids and my wife. Yeah, it's the, the easy answer. It's, it's the easiest answer, right? And it's true. Yeah. But what fuel, what's always fueled me, and this goes back to what you're saying, is that day, whenever that day comes for me, when I have to sit here and face God. Yeah. I want to know that I actually did what I was supposed to do here Dude, versus not. Like, that's what scares me, yes. right? So um, that's what always kind of pushes you through those hard times and things like that. It's, it's, you're 100% right, dude. Um, do you still play any golf? Yeah, so it's funny. I took 11 and a half so, years off. I didn't touch a club. Wow. Yeah, you know, I just, I was like burnt from it. I had like a, uh, I don't know, it was like I had a hate relationship with it for yeah. a while. And like two and a half years ago, my financial advisor, he's, he's in Atlanta, uh, and he said, hey, I'm coming down to Florida. We're playing, uh, you won't mind, I know it's a Floridian medalist. Medalist is like where Tiger Woods is a member at. I was going to say, stupid, yeah. like beautiful golf course. Yeah. He's like, I'm taking you out of retirement. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, let's go. Yeah. So awesome. I did. And uh, and since then, two years ago, now I'm playing all the time. I'm loving it. I'm having a blast again. Age, right? So it's, I, can, I can go and just have fun. I don't have to care what I shoot, yeah. how I score. I don't give a shit. I can drink some alcohol on the book. <laughs> just yeah, chill. Not as competitive as, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, I am. It's, it's fun. <laughs> He goes, nah, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I can have fun. I can get competitive. No. <laughs> so competitive, bro. Yeah. So want to beat everyone's ass. But yeah. no, it's it's fun, dude. It's it's good. I'm 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 enjoying it. Yeah, I love that. It's I'm I'm I think it's that 40 <laughs> clock starts hitting you and you're like, dude, like body dude, doesn't. The 40 recover. clock starts hitting, everything's sore now. Yes. What the f <laughs> everything's <laughs> sore, bro. Yeah, fucking... Wrists are sore, back sore, like pull the growing, take a shower. It's like I'm just in there doing nothing. You're like, dude, it's it is wild. Wild. What's um? So the family life, man. Married. How long have you been married? Been married nine years. That's awesome. My wife's Congrats. amazing. I'm I'm very blessed. She's 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 the most. She's absolutely incredible. She's supportive as hell. She's um. She's my other brain. Yeah, we see things the same, but then she analyzes things different than I do. So I bounce everything off her because she she can see a different side that I might not see, which is huge it because is. now I can see every side. Um, and they always know, man. Yeah, their intuition bro. on people. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, it wild. So so super blessed in that aspect. Yeah. With it, um, I would say number one tip for above everything of being an entrepreneur is make sure you find the right wife right. your partner right. is a train wreck your everything in your life will be a train wreck man no it is amazing i when people ask who the mvp is i say my wife i yeah. said Love my that. my wife with the three kids at home if my babies weren't taken care of and mm -hmm. knowing that they're in the best hands in the world I could not do what I do. Right. And it, it is the easy answer. Well, I do it for the wife and kids. And I, I say that because I really do. Like, right. I've worked so, because I owe them everything. But 
I do this for me too, you know, and, but if you got to make yourself happy before you can make, you make wife. them happy, you say that. And you, if you marry someone that's a train wreck or don't put in the work, your life is going to be a complete shit show and you will no never be a successful doubt. entrepreneur. No doubt. What's y'all's favorite thing to do outside of work, outside of golf? What's the favorite thing to do with the wife and kids? Just chill. We go to the club a lot. We go to the pool. We go down slides. You know, yeah, it, it, just anything best. that makes them happy, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm good. You know, if I, if they're happy and they're excited, yeah. I'm good. Like, I, yeah, I don't do um, a ton of stuff outside of my family. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm a big family guy. I love being with my kids and my wife. Now, I have a lot of friends, and luckily, we have a lot of great friends, and they have kids too. So we do a lot of things together. Yeah. We're going to Bahamas next weekend. That's uh, awesome. On, you know, just you know, it's only fifty miles. Yeah, from I was saying, you take so. like a jet ski over yeah, there. Yeah, almost. You, li yeah. you literally Where basically from? you were like Bahamas. Could. Oh yeah, we're yeah, you, you almost could, but yeah. it's it's literally fifty miles to Bimini. So from here, that's um, wild. So you know, just doing stuff with that with friends and the kids. Like, yeah, that's, that's it's fun. It's it's awesome. It, it's it's what life's about. You know, it, it is. I think that's a lot where a lot of success comes, man. A ton of friends, and I I love that we have we're we're actually going to do podcast in L.A. What two weeks and like his wife's going, my wife's love going. It. And we're going to go you know, do stuff together. But I don't do – if you're not a part of Results Roofing, I, and I say Results Roofing, the RR brands because we have all the companies, I don't really hang out with anyone right, outside there. And it's right. the wife and kids, man. Yeah. It's just the wife and kids. You're we do focused, the same stuff. Man, and you're doing, you're doing great stuff, and you're, you're, you're making an impact on people, and that's – what more can you ask for? It's yeah. fucking awesome. No, that's great, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. So I uh, always say this, you know, any advice to give to people? I know we got to end it soon. Um, for those out there, you've had a ton of success. I've just two part. What's next for you, right? Like what 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 do you see doing next, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you're competitive. That's why I made that comment. <laughs> I knew it was just that. Hey, so what's next for you? You don't seem like you're satisfied. Which I no, don't I'm like. not. I feel like I haven't even started. Yeah, um, love that. Which is which is great, right? Yeah. Um, you know, one thing you touched on. You know, one thing I I, I pray about every day is continue to bring the right people in my life, life and get the wrong people out, you know, and, and yep. God's been doing that with friends and businesses. Um, what's next? Um, it changes for me a lot, but what's right now, as far as business wise, a lot of roll-ups. Um, uh, again, I told you I'm in the middle of large capital raises. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of raising about 2.5 billion right now for projects that are my own, as well as awesome. other projects yeah. right now. Um, so that's, that's very much a focus, obviously. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're big, big deals. Um, you know, I just got a term sheet the other day for six hundred million dollars, and when you get that kind of a term sheet, it, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, you just want to get over the fucking finish line, though. Yeah, exactly. Like, right? Oh, don't you so, come on. so working on that. Um, so the, I, I love doing that. I'm I'm really enjoying the capital raising side yeah. of things. I really am. Um, I, I didn't know I would so much, but it's it's fun. I get to meet a lot of great people yeah. and, and make an impact while making great you know, money myself or, you know, I get myself involved with deals. All right now we're doing another deal with marine storage and, and, and industrial tilt wall building, you know, 250,000 square foot industrial facilities. That's awesome. Um, just stuff like that that's come my way uh, that I stay open to. Yeah, you um, have to. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. My son's five and a half, my daughter's seven. So starting to kind of start okay. to coach them a little yeah. more now, you it's know, crazy. talk yeah. to them differently, which is cool, which yeah. I, I haven't been able to do yet because they're so young. So really focusing on them is is my biggest my biggest goal to to make sure that they I can give them whatever I, I I've learned to give them yeah so they can be better and, and and they can start at a higher level than I ever started at it's uh, I I told my wife that for next year for Connor's birthday he just turned seven like last week I said I want to buy him a business like laundromat something like yeah. you know just yeah. kind of hands off but start to stack that wealth even if it Profit is a thousand bucks from five. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It's, it's like just learning. Start, start that. He's yeah. he's a he's a young entrepreneur, and I love seeing that man. I love seeing kids hustle. I love seeing that, and he, he is like that's how that's how he does, and it, it, it's huge. And that's awesome. I, I think, and I want to I, I want to ask you this because the advice for anyone, and I'll I'll start mine is, you know, there's as being an entrepreneur, it's it's not about what you want, it's about what you're willing to do to get there. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was having some some success, and then. I was never really a big drinker the last since my son was born. The last seven years, I don't really drink. I was probably drinking once a month, once every two months, but nothing crazy, right? And uh, about two years ago, give or take, I don't, I don't know the day. I'm not, I don't like saying, "Oh, I'm sober," because right. nothing happened. I'm not, but I just said, you know, I woke up one day, I was like, "Man, I'm not drinking anymore," and I, I just stopped drinking. And I noticed my levels go to different mm. heights. Like it was like I had a competitive advantage, right? And I tell people that it's like usually there's always, it's not what you're not doing that's hurting you 
there's something that you do that's holding you back mm -hmm. from achieving greatness or becoming the person you want to be. I felt like mine was I, when I would drink, I would drink a lot, right? So I might drink once a month, but I'd probably drink too much or right. once every so i just said you know what i'm done right. i'm not doing it anymore right. i don't know when will i drink again absolutely man we sell the company for a couple hundred million let's celebrate but <laughs> i'm not out right now like we're focused and i noticed my energy my thoughts everything about me skyrocketed. i right. felt like it took me to a new level leadership father husband whatever for you if you give advice to anyone out there don't you don't have to be an entrepreneur you be a person man just yeah. being your best what is it that have you experienced anything like that yeah. or what would kind of be the advice you could give them? It'd be a learn to analyze your thoughts. Your, your thoughts create your world. Right? Your, your thoughts create yes. feelings. Your feelings create energy. Energy is real. Vibration is real. Yes. And that's going to create your world. Um, and so you, you, most people don't analyze their thoughts, right? We have 60,000 thoughts a day. You can't yeah. analyze them all, but you have to learn how to see the negative thoughts that you're having, the limited beliefs that you're having, and learn how to move them and switch them. My son, he's five and a half, and he says to me probably three times a day, he's like, Daddy, I'm having a bad thought. And I go, okay, what is it? We analyze it, and then I teach him how to switch That's it around, awesome. right? Um, he's learning that at five and a half. Most people don't do that. We don't yeah. analyze our thoughts on a daily basis. We just let them keep going, and then we go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into a negative or yeah. bad place. Um, that's that's why people start drinking and doing things like it. It's, it happened. We're human. We all have them. We all have bad thoughts. Don't think that guys like Elon Musk don't have bad thoughts every day. These people just know how to how to analyze them, not pay attention to them, and flip them into a positive thought, and they move forward. And if you can do that, when you start learning how to do that, you know, when I was playing golf, is where I learned a lot of that. I had to, I had to teach myself how to think more positive. Yeah. Um, and, and analyze the negative thoughts. And so if you can start reading books on that and training your mind, you will change your world. You will, because again, yeah. your, your thoughts are what create your world. I, I Good or agree. bad. Yeah, no, and that's, I actually felt, as weird as it sounds, I felt uh, I had a lot of anxiety. And, um, and I don't, I hate saying anxiety because anxiety is a feeling. And I had it my whole life, but I think it was caused from things that I went through and I never faced. But actually, when... And part of it was when I stopped drinking, I gave myself, I started working out, like, but it was, man, I, my Achilles heel for a long time was managing my emotions. It was right. the mental stability, right. managing the thoughts. You could get a bad thought in my head and I could suffer. Anxiety comes from your thoughts. It does, man. And I, I, it was crazy, but the same thing when, once you, once you start controlling your thoughts, yeah. the game's over. It's, it's, it's different it, world. It's, it changes up. Yeah. So for you, how can people find you? So I know you're in Florida, but how can people find you? Let's say somebody does have a big deal they're looking at or roll up. How can yeah. they find you? Yeah, Instagram. I'm on, I'm on that the most. Um, Nick J Ayala N I C K J A Y A L A. Um, I'm on that quite a bit. Um, all the other handles are basically the same as yeah, well. Same. Um, you know, deals want to come my way. Send them. I'm, I'm always open and looking yeah. at deals and seeing if if I can help in any way. Whether it's strategically, I do a lot of that for people. Um, not just not just on the capital raising side, but just strategically, you know, I've yeah. been through a lot of roll-ups. I do roll-ups right now. I'm doing them myself. I know I'm, I, I'm blessed to, to know a lot of private equity, a lot of family offices that can be your end buyer, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, if you have deals or, or you want to analyze things, you know, I'm, I'm open to it. I, lo I love business, dude. I love talking about it. It's yeah. my passion. It's fun. Same. So I appreciate it, man. I appreciate yeah. you coming on. Um, you, if you have any questions, reach out to them. You got a company, just anything, reach out, right? The more hands you shake, the more money you'll make. And the more people you know, it'll change your life. So I appreciate you coming you, on, my man. Thank you. Appreciate you, man.